Um, movement is okay. The forward dash is actually insanely good. The back dash is just fine. Her jump is kind of tall, but otherwise very, very ordinary. Um, she does have some movement-based stuff, namely this. Um, she's got what's kind of a double jump. Um, the little ice ball does have a hitbox, but that's almost secondary. It almost doesn't matter. The only thing this is really... I shouldn't say the only thing this is for. You can't really do any... Like, she can attack coming down, but, like, it's such a... It telegraphs so much, and you can't do anything out of it. It basically has two purposes. One is to avoid, like, a very obvious anti-air the opponent can go for, but you don't usually get a punish. Even if I do that and Ryu DPs under me, like, there's a good chance this DP will still hit me. And even if it doesn't, I'm not going to get a punish. The best thing that could happen is he DPs into the Ice Ball and takes, like, the 30 damage that it does. Um, but more importantly, it helps her get out of the corner. She's a character who has a, I would say, a tendency to get cornered, both because she's keep away oriented and, um... Uh, without significant reversal options. Well, that, I actually have a lot to say about her reversal options, but uh, basically, uh, without this, it would be hard to escape the corner, and even with it, it's a little hard to escape the corner. The opponent can still jump and meet her midair fairly easily. Um, they can still, like, make her land on something like a Hadoken. And, you know, it's it's just generally, like, it's got kind of a lot of landing recovery, and it's very, very committal. The opponent can see it and react to it. Um... But you can escape the corner with this. It depends on how close they are to you. If they're like this close, they're gonna you're gonna have a hard time even getting the jump off in the first place. And if you're like this far away, you know they're gonna be able to potentially hit you because it doesn't go that far over your heads. So it's 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 not like it's a free escape, but it's a really good tool. But like that's her only mobility option. Um, not uh, there's a little bit more. I mean, she's got like an entirely mobility based special move. Double jump is minus five on block. I didn't know that. If they like block the ice ball. Can be punished with Chun Super. Interesting. Yeah, certain things will like chase after it. I think Chun Super in, in and of itself is five frames, right? I think Colleen Super is five frames. According to frame data, Frost Tower seven. Not that fast. Um yes, this is the how to play Colleen. Let's just go through our normals. Let's do this same old, same old, same old. Um stand jab is pretty good. It's four frames. It goes pretty far. Um, it goes the second farthest of all her special moves, and you can combo into it fairly easily, compared to uh, stand like kick, which goes farther still, but doesn't combo very easily. So, like, that doesn't... that's not a string. But this is a string, so it's very uh, useful for doing her light normal combos. Um, I think it goes about the same range as crouch jab. It might go a little bit farther. Yeah, uh, crouch jab is usually a little bit better. They're, again, like every stand jab and crouch jab. Um, this one's three frame startup. I shouldn't say like every, and then say that. But this one's three frame startup, and this one's four frame, but this one goes a little farther, and this one goes a little less far. For the most part, they're pretty interchangeable, okay? Her jabs are almost the same normal. Um, and she's got um, some pretty interesting combos from jabs, so like, uh, how do I say? It's quite a good little button, I suppose. Uh, plus two on block for the standing one, plus one on block for the crouching one, so the standing one is a little better if you know the opponent's going to block or if you think they are, because it lets you get better uh, block strings, better um, uh, frame traps. So like a stand trap, stand forward is a uh, three frame frame trap, and will beat anything in the game barring reversal since it's a three frame frame trap into a medium. And I think you can do like an entire sequence with stand jab um, pretty easily with like your frame trap options. Um, which I think doesn't work with crouch jab. See, that was uh, stand jab, crouch strong, stand forward. And I think... No, that still worked. Never mind. You can do that with either one. I thought that pushed out too much. Like, I don't know which character I'm thinking of. Um, anyway, plus four on hit, so you can't do anything from it except land other lights, except stand light kick, which is five frames. On counter hit, you can get um, most of your mediums, because they're like all six or five. Um... Let me see here. Uh, not, I don't have a super whole lot to say about um, her lights. Um, she has limited combo options off of them. Uh, you've got basically light hands. And then you've also got um, EX hands. And then you also have her little uppercut thing. And I guess you have super as well. Um, what are her other special moves? Let me actually take a look at her command list. I don't normally think about her special moves in relation to each other. She's got the command dashes, the uppercut, the parry, and the hands. Okay. 
I feel like I would have forgotten to mention at least some of those if I didn't look at that. Um, uh, crouch light kick, uh, four frame startup plus zero. No, plus where does it say? Plus one, plus one or three. Um, I think it. You can chain it into the crouch jab. It would link anyway into the crouch jab, but um, the chain is good because it's a true block string. But it's it won't chain into the singe jab. So you've got to do that combo. Crouch short, crouch jab. And then from there you can do all that same stuff. Um, pretty much her only low confirm. Uh, not technically, there's like one other one. But like, you know, useful if you want to threaten low pressure. Which is actually quite good for Colleen because she has a decent overhead too. Um, I don't have that much to say about her lows. Her lows are just like bog standard. She does have a 3 frame normal, that's kind of notable. Uh, and her damage off of an EX off of lights is pretty good. Better than most of the cast, I think. Which is funny because, like, overall her damage is pretty pretty bad. Stab medium punch uh, goes pretty far. I don't have a whole super lot to say about it. Um, if you land it, you can actually link a jab afterwards, I think. But it doesn't lead to a lot of the stuff a jab normally leads to. Um, she's got like a target combo with jab, I'll talk about it later. Um, but the... You can technically use it as a confirm in and of itself. That doesn't work. So yeah, it's only like that. Um, it also, I think, goes the furthest of all of her medium normals. It's a little bit like uh, Akuma, actually. So medium punch can be reaction cancelled into lighter EX hands. I knew Fierce could. I never really tried using medium punch. Yeah, that looks possible. Mm, it's pushing it. A bit emotional to light. That seems to be possible. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. So it's like a standalone confirm. And if you're doing it like a standalone confirm, you could use it uh, hard hands, and that's actually a lot better instead of like using lighter medium. Jab only combos into like light. Um, oh, okay. Stand, stand medium punch, stand light punch, light hands, last hit whiffs makes it minus 15. Never ever do that combo. Now you know. Um, it's useful for linking into, I suppose, but the pushback is. Well, it's like, okay, here, um, this is a very important combo. Um, here's a, a decent example. Um, like, take Stand Roundhouse, it's a button you can link out of, I'll talk more about it in a second. But, um, if you do, like, stand, f if you do this button, you can combo into Stand Forward, you can also combo into Stand Strong. But if you do Stand Forward, it doesn't combo, that wasn't a combo, I don't have it set to auto block. Um, but it doesn't combo into Hard Hands. But if you use Stand Strong, it actually, Stand Strong has more hits done on, in cancels. So it actually will combo into hard hands. And I think it goes a little farther than low strong. I think. So that's useful for combos. It's like a it's a, a normal use as a linker every now and then, linking into. It's more like you do that probably about as much, probably more than you link out of it. Um six frame startup, plus two on block, plus four on a hit. So it's kind of good to get the opponent to block, but it has kind of a lot of pushback, so it's not so easy as it seems to just do like a that and then walk and throw. So those frames are not super useful. Um, it just means the opponent can easily push buttons after you make them block it, which is cool. Um, Crouch Medium Punch is her main confirm starter. Um, it's plus five on hit, plus two on block. So getting the opponent to block is already pretty great. But she has a 5 frame medium in the form of stand medium kick. And from that 5 frame medium you can do medium hands, which I would recommend to absolutely no one. You can do um, her little uppercut thing, which is pretty good because it gets a knockdown and some medium pressure. That's probably the main one you'll end up using. Actually, probably isn't because the main one you'll end up using, she has a target combo off of the medium kick. And this is a fine place to land that. The target combo is cool because it ends in a V skill, so you get a little bit of V meter. And if you already have a V trigger, um, you can actually use that. Normally, her um, V skill is like a different thing. It's like a different. It's like a two hit action, but the second hit only activates if like you uh, if if you get hit. But in this target combo, it's always the second hit, and the second hit's the one that's V trigger cancelable. So like raw, you can't V trigger cancel it. But it's quite good as a V trigger activate. That's like a very common, a very useful combo that Colleen has. 
Burr or Ryu? Um, let me see here. He's not gonna get frozen, is he? I don't know how that works with like training mode. He's just gonna be blue forever if I don't restart, because it doesn't wear off. Um, so s crutch medium punch starts your confirms and the main things you'd confirm into I just showed. Um, apart from that, it's good. It's six frame startup and her light her jabs are plus four on hit. So um, it's good to link into after like a counter hit from certain things. That's like the obvious one is a uh, crouch jab or stand jab. I showed that off earlier, but that's like a super, super important little sequence for her. Um, any character who has a sequence like that is pretty strong in neutral, because this is already a frame trap. That's already like plus two into a four frame button. I mean into a six frame button, so that's already a four frame frame trap, which is not too bad. And then if you see it, if it gets the counter hit, the whole thing combos and you can reaction link out of it into like a pretty long little sequence. It does good damage. And on block, it's still pretty good. Like that, into like walk and throw is still like a respectable option. You got multiple avenues of success, basically. Um, let me see here. Remember that instead of instead the whiteout combo into V trigger. Instead of the whiteout combo into V trigger, you can leave the V scale under and go straight to V trigger, and then do V scale during the V trigger. Better stun Oki and damage. Wait, I've never actually like. Hold on. I didn't, know, I didn't know about that conversion. Do it like that instead. Good lord. That's actually kind of cool. I never would have thought to do that. I know about both of the individual pieces of that, that you can be trigger cancel that, that combo early, and I know that you can do the um, that juggle there, V-skill after V-trigger. But doing both, that's pretty cool. Versus... 207, 479. Did that actually do more? I keep on missing him. Not the combo. There it is. That did less. Less damage. 495. I think it was more stun though, right? Yeah, it did more stun, but less damage. I like the Oki more too, so, but you lose a little bit of damage. Anyway, um, Crouch Medium Punch also comes to hard hands, yeah, so both of her Medium Punches do. That was counter hand, so it doesn't count. Um, so you can technically do that as well, but uh, you wouldn't if only because the range is a little bit worse. So just from a consistency, consistency standpoint, there are certain ranges where you can get like the uh, Stand Medium Punch, but not the Crouch Medium Punch. For the most part, those two combos are like utterly interchangeable. Um, but it, it's that's important information because you can buffer it into hard hands. So like this is like a fairly like low, low risk poke, and you can just kind of buffer it into hard hands every single time. It's like a better poke than this is, I think. They both have the same startup, but this one's got kind of a better hitbox. It goes less range, but it's got like. Um, uh, it's it's got a better hurtbox to it. It's less committal. Anyway, if it ever actually connects on the opponent's poke, you can just combo the hard hands from it, which is kind of good. Really good counter poke button. This one is not as good a counter poke because it's more easily hit by lows. Um, let me see here. Stay medium kick. It's a five frame button. Uh, mostly useful for linking. I think it's kind of bad on block. I think it's like minus two on block. So, um, it's not like, you, you try and do it, yeah, minus two or plus three. You try and do it only when the opponent, um, uh, when you get, like, confirms and stuff. It is the starter of her, that TC. So it's great to try and land. But, um, you don't usually buffer it that much compared to other buttons. It does have a really good hitbox, for what it's worth. Um, better hitbox than it looks. It's not like a good anti-air or anything like that. I'll talk about our anti-airs later. Don't, no one let me forget about that. But it is five frames, which makes it really important from frame trapping and also linking. Oh, I'm still on Skype. Um, obviously, like linking, if anything's plus five, you can combo into it, which is really important. But more importantly, I shouldn't say more importantly, but like also important is the fact that um, uh, if you're doing something like stand jab, stand forward, 
that's gonna be that's gonna beat three frames. Whereas if you're gonna do Saint Jablo strong, that's not gonna beat three frames. So like if you're fighting a Chunli who really likes reversal, crouch like kick, um, you need to adapt your play to include three frame frame traps. And honestly, she doesn't have that many. So like you've got to do stuff like that. Um, plus three on block. I mean on hit basically doesn't do anything. I'm not even sure if you can link a crouch jab. That should theoretically work, but for range it doesn't. Um, technically speaking, if you get a counter hit, I guess you could do two of them. Pretty cool looking combo. I don't think I've ever landed anything like that in a match. I have with Akuma. He's got a he's got that combo on counter hit too. The hitbox is kind of similar. Um, I don't remember if it forces stand or anything like that, but I don't think Colleen needs force stand on any of her combos, so it doesn't matter that much. She doesn't have anything that requires a standing opponent. I don't think. Um, let's see here. Um, crouch medium kick. Um, if you look at the frame data, it's not super impressive. It's uh, 8 frame startup, which is kind of bad. Plus 1 on block, plus 3 on hit. The fact that it's plus is kind of cool. Um, but plus 3 on hit is harder to do something with than it looks because it's got an insane amount of pushback. On paper, it looks kind of bad. But in practice, um, the hitbox of this is fucking incredible. And the hurtbox is also very recessed. And the range is really good for like a normal in this game. So this is actually it's it's actually one of the better pokes in the game, if not like like one of the best pokes in the game. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about that when I talk about Vanity. There's some really cool stuff she's got with fucking Vanity step. Um, I thought. Hmm. Stay medium. Oh, okay. There you go. That's it. I thought that one worked too, because this one's plus three as well. I guess not. She like carries momentum from her dashes when she use, does cancel some dashes. Anyway, um, this button got super super good range, and you can just kind of counter poke almost every character in the game with it. There's no conversions off of it traditionally; it doesn't cancel or anything like that. Um, but kind of notable is you can buffer V trigger cancels from it really easily, and more importantly, you can actually reaction V trigger cancel. It's a little bit hard, but it's totally doable. Um, you can just fish with it. And then if you see a successful one versus a blocked one, on the successful one you can actually do kind of a late V-Trigger cancel, and it'll combo from it. And that'll get a lot of damage and a lot of stun off of your little poke. Um, and that's how most, that's 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 often how I see people activate. That's like the main V-Trigger combo besides just like V-Trigger confirms, like the, you know, that stuff. Um, very common to see it off of the crouch medium kick, just because it's a very good button and it is kind of like a reaction confirm. Um, Colleen has a lot of that stuff. The only problem I have with it is that it's kind of hard to do online. But this is like just, it's just a poke, but it's a really good poke. And then it's got exactly one conversion, V-Trigger, and only first V-Trigger too. Uh, St. Fierce, it's a cancel. It goes pretty far for a cancelable button in this game. Like if the opponent makes me block a sweep from this range, I could do St. Fierce and then cancel the hard hands. Um, so it's, it's pretty good, and it does have quite a lot of hit stun, so you can combo into absolutely everything. Um, and it carries her forward a lot, too. Like, if I just did this raw, I would be unable to hit Ryu, but from, like, the same range, if I, like, cancel it to uh, that, it would, like, hit Ryu because she takes a big step forward while she's doing it, which is kind of cool. Um, linking into it is pretty much impossible. Um, if you're doing something from a jump, it's, like, a decent thing to do after a jump, but technically speaking, you can do, like, a high damage link instead. Um, it's useful for like punishing and stuff, because a lot of the time you're not gonna have it'll, it'll be like your max damage punish off of a lot of stuff, a lot of like, um, not like crush counter stuff, but like, uh, like I don't know. Well, I said a sweep earlier, but like just generally like minus things that aren't crush counter punishable, you can just tag them with this. Whereas stem runoffs would be way too slow, or you know not necessarily within range. So this is just a more universal combo. And then from there you can go for hard hands, you can go for ex hands, you can go for your little uppercut guy. Um, very common enders for that. I feel like I'm missing something really important about this. For one thing, it's a crush counter. But the crush counter is probably the strangest crush counter in the entire game because it does absolutely nothing for you. It, it's not that it does nothing for you. I'll, I'll explain what it does. For one thing, it gives you V-meter, which is kind of cool. Um, it's like, okay, you get this crush counter and you get like a lot of extra frame data, but she can't like link almost anything from her extra frame data. She can't like approach and do something. She can't like walk in a little bit and do something for the most part. There might be like one thing. I don't even know if there's one thing. She can't cancel it to like her slide stuff. Seems like that would work, but it doesn't. No matter how you do it. Um, that actually comboed. That might combo normally. 
Yeah, it does. Um, but uh, I think it has one link. It has a. Uh, this doesn't normally work. Stand hard punch, crutch medium kick. But I think you can do that. Yeah, and that's not really. That's not really. That's not a super important little link. Um, the main purpose of it is that you can reaction cancel it. So like Stand Fierce cancels, but if you're just fishing with it, um, you can see the crush counter super easily and then just cancel. So it just makes it makes her it makes it a standalone confirm. I say it makes it a standalone confirm, but technically speaking, you can already reaction cancel it. You don't need you don't need the crush counter. It's just it makes it a lot easier. But you can do you can set the dummy to random block, and then you can you can only cancel on reaction to a successful hit. That's already possible. Oh shit! But I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but with crush counter, it becomes super super easy. Um, it's just oh yeah, that's a that's a counter hit. Time to go for my combo. Time to go for my cancel. Um, you can do it to V trigger too, and I guess you could do it to Ice Ball. Um, what else? That's pretty much all I have to say about Sand Fierce. You can reaction cancel it if you're good. You can it's a crush counter, so you can get V meter. It's like a pretty good poke. You can buffer stuff from it. It's good in neutral too. It goes pretty far. It's got an okay hitbox, and it does have the priority of a heavy, which is more important. I think it's like eight frame startup. I've got the information right in front of me. Eight frame minus two plus five. That plus five sounds super cool, but I don't think you can like do almost anything with it. You might be able to do something after a step. You wouldn't do that, but that's actually really cool. I never like tried to do that. Damn it, that timing is really strange. I've never seen anyone do that combo. It's kind of neat that she can do it. But like that's minus two, so like you wouldn't do that anyway. Like this is already not a great like sequence because it's got like shit ton of startup and then it's minus two. And the conversion isn't even a super cool conversion or anything like that. Um. Card Shard Punch is a... Uh, technically it cancels, I think. It does, right? Yeah. But you wouldn't really use it like that generally. The damage isn't super crazy good. This is like 890. This is, I think, only 80. Um, its main purpose is an anti-air. Canceling it as an anti-air I don't think is super useful. You might be able to get some kind of Ice Ball cancel, but it's too committal, really. Um, as a... I'm a little fast. As an anti-air, it's good, I guess. There's some considerations. It's very tall. But even if you don't counter hit the opponent, it like can win clean. But it's better if you use it early so you get the counter hits. It's more reliable the sooner you do it. Um, the one little problem it has is that it's not super... It doesn't really have a hitbox above her head at all. So if you're doing it from like this close, it doesn't work. You have to be like kind of like this far out to actually anti-air the opponent. Which is kind of a big problem that Colleen faces, is reliable anti-airing. Um... So, like, this Crouch Fierce is not very good. Like, you've got to be aware of where you are. It's a great anti-air, but you can't just do it, like, willy-nilly from any jump. That was, like, the closest that she can get reliable anti-airs. Um, and again, it cancels, but, like, none of the things... I guess, technically speaking, you could anti-air with it and then cancel into a Vanity Step and get some kind of... get a mix-up going. And that actually might be okay. But you have just the concern that Ryu might just, like, see you do the cancel and then just mash the ever-loving fuck out of, a. Uh, EXDP as soon as he lands. But I guess you could bait that with just the one that doesn't go forward. It'd be kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not going to say there's nothing to that. There might be some tricks associated with that, but I haven't really explored them that much. Um, what else does this do? Anything? I can't think of anything. It's mostly an A tier. Sermon House is a pretty good little poke, I suppose. Um, it also has a really good uh, frame advantage on hit. And I suppose on block. I think the opponent can... No, on block it's minus two. The opponent might even be able to duck it. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, technically speaking, you can get a lot of damage out of it from, like, cancels into... Or links into stand strong into hard hands. It's like a per max damage meterless punish. And you can also go into a medium kick into her little medium kick tar target combo. Which is pretty good, because that gives you some B meter and does good damage too. Crouch, Hard Punch, Light Vanity, EX, Ice Ball. That's like an anti-air or what? Or just like as a sequence. Gets the opponent eating some fucking EX Ice Balls. That does put them at the perfect range for what it's worth. 
Um, what else about this? It's mostly just used in damage maximization in combos. Like, if you get a stun with Colleen, which is a thing that happens all the fucking time, um, you would do a jumping combo into stun hard kick, and then something from that. Um, you don't really see it in footsies that much, just because the opponent can duck it and because it's kind of slow. Technically it anti-airs, but it's not the best hitbox in the world, and the speed makes it so you could do a lot better for an anti-air. But it is, it, it's an anti-air that goes really far, but it's just kind of slow. It's like not fast enough that it can like really do as much as you'd want it to. Um, and then it has another super important purpose, which can happen if you get an anti-air. And I'll talk about it a little bit as an anti-air in this case. But it's her crush counter normal for combos. Um, this is the ideal button to hit if you block a DP, for example. It gives you a really nice long spin stun, and from that spin stun you can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, the main one is... I think dash in... Is it dash in fierce? It might just be dash in strong. Or it's dash in low strong, I think. That might be it. And then you do either that little target combo or you do into stem medium kick into hands or something like that. Uh, if I was doing hard hands, I would have to I'd have to use EX. Or I'd have to use stem medium punch into hard hands. I think those are her general enders there. It's not terrible damage, but it's not very good damage for a crush counter. I want to do that instead. That actually only did like that did like almost the same amount. Um, more even if you're really far away too, it's not a super risky button to push far away. Even if you're really far away, I think you can get dash in into jab, jab target combo. So that's kind of nice. Reasonably consistent combo. Only doesn't work at absolute max range, which I'm already at. I should have talked about that TC sooner. I like put it off, figuring I talk about the other TCs later as well, but I've already talked about the other one a lot. Um, let me see here. Uh, if you get a mid air connect counter hit, which is totally a thing that can happen if you're using this as an ATR, um, I think you just do another one. There's not that many cool combos you can do here. Tagging them with another stand run hus is pretty good. You can also do like medium hands, I think. Or is it light hands? I like the look of medium. You might even be able to do heavy, to be honest. That looked really cool. EX works too, but EX doesn't have any juggles. So it looks really awesome with that big old launcher. And I guess it is pretty awesome because it gives you a nice ball even if they quick stand. But um, it's kind of a waste of a bar. I'd probably just use medium hands most of the time. Actually, heavy looks like it might actually be consistent. But it's like, if you're anti-airing with this, you can absolutely get them, like, with a counter hit. Alright, that looks really committal. If the opponent quick stood there, I'd be dead. I say stick with medium. Or just stick with another stamina house, since that probably does more damage than fucking medium hands anyway. Let's tag them with two stamina houses. Um, it doesn't cancel or anything like that. You can cancel it to be trigger, but you wouldn't. But it does work. Uh, I don't have that much else to say about it. It's her crush counter normal, and it's her, like, you know, max damage link starter. But it's kind of risky and neutral, and it's an okay in tier. Um, crush Roundhouse is a pretty strange sweep. It's the only sweep in the entire game where the second hit doesn't cancel into V-Trigger. Um, in fact, I think it doesn't cancel at all if the opponent blocks it. Um, you can't save this. That was some really bad V-Trigger pressing. Neither hit is cancelable into V-Trigger on block, which is actually really horrible. You can't make it safe like that. And they would be... I understand why the second hit doesn't cancel to be trigger Giles is like that too. It's so you can't just, like, whiff it. Or, like, it's so you can't just throw it out willy-nilly and then save yourself. They want it to be an unsafe sweep. But I understand why the first hit doesn't cancel to be trigger But it does have an interesting property. It is a cancelable uh, sweep on its first hit. The first hit does not knock down. And it does 60 damage. So if you do the first hit by itself, you can actually buffer out the hard hands or something like that and get a cancel from it. And uh, that's not even that great to be honest because she's got a 90 damage cancel on Sand Fierce. Um, and also if the opponent blocks it sounds like oh I can just use I can cancel it to make it safe. One her special moves aren't the safest special moves ever anyway. But two it doesn't cancel on block it only cancels on hit. Which actually makes it a bit of an option select 
but a really shitty one because the sweep is really, really unsafe. But you can always buffer into whatever the best possible thing you can land, like super or something like that. And it just won't come out if it's blocked, so it's like guaranteed to work, I suppose. But you wouldn't use it like that anyway, because the sweep is really unsafe on block. More importantly, um, if you get like an ice ball, it's a pretty... I think it's our longest range attack that cancels the first hit of her sweep. So if you get an ice ball and you need to combo out of it from pretty far out, um, it's a fairly good attack to go for to like pick up the combo. I would say this is his main use. See an ice ball connect and then just go for the sweep into like hands. Very common. Um, what else? I don't have that much to say about a sweep. It's kind of risky normal. A lot of bad players hit it a lot, but it's not that good. Um, uh, goo -goo -goo. Let me think. I guess that's all around in normals. What about the TC? Jab TC. So, Jab Strong Fierce is a combo. It's exactly like Ibuki's in every way, except... Um, I think the damage might... No, the damage might be the same. I'm actually not sure. She doesn't have a way to save it. Like, Ibuki has, like, Jab Strong Short to make it safe if she sees that it's not working. It lets her use it as a confirm. Colleen, this is already unsafe, and this is, like, really unsafe. So... Um, you've got to hit confirm it, but it's actually pretty easy to hit confirm because it starts off a light punch, so you can just do, like, you know, jab, jab, strong, fierce. Very common combo for Colleen players. Also crouch, jab, stand, jab. Um, because she can only combo into crouch short, I mean, crouch jab from crouch short, you can't actually get this off of a crouch short by itself, so you can't use it in, like, low confirms. But, um, very, very common for Colleen players to do crouch jab and then stand jab and then use that as a confirm for that TC. And it's just like landing a stand fierce raw, the third hit. Um, it's still, I think it doesn't cancel on block like Ibuki's. I think. Yeah, so you can't like you can't you can't just do it. Um, you can do it to V trigger, I think. Right? No, that doesn't work either. That actually works for Ibuki, but not for Colleen. Poor Colleen. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, if you get the first two hits only, technically speaking, you can do that. <laughs> Save yourself with V-Trigger on the second hit, not the third. Um, little unfortunate little scenario for Colleen, but it's not that bad. It's a good TC anyway. It just gets really good damage off of lights. Her damage off of lights is actually pretty good because of that target combo. Um, and it also gives her like a decent punish in four frame scenarios. Like uh, if, you, if the opponent's like minus four or something like that, and recovering decently close. You can sometimes pick up that combo and then just, you know, get a ton of damage compared to other characters who would get very small amounts of damage. Um, it helps a little bit, but it's just, she gets the okay damage in weird scenarios, and then when her, when she's getting her full damage combos, they're just not very strong. Um, let me see here. There's no, like, like B and B punish combo that uses that, because it scales as three hits. You only, you only see it in, like, confirms. If you're doing a punish, you'll just, like, not use that combo. You'll just use, like, the raw stuff. If you know it's gonna hit. Second hit of crutch hard kick is apparently minus twelve for the record. I didn't mention this, but um crutching hard kick crush counters. The crush counter, to the best that I'm, I can tell, it does absolutely nothing. Like, yeah, the second hit crush counter makes it um it makes it a hard knockdown sweep. So it does the same thing a crush counter sweep does anyway. But you can still cancel the first hit. And it sounds like, oh, I can just use, the crush counter will help me confirm into max damage, but it's like, it already self-confirms because it already only cancels on hit. So you don't need to... There's no interesting thing you can do with the extra hit stun. Well, I guess that's pretty interesting. I don't think that works naturally. But you wouldn't do that anyway, to be honest. The whole point is you wouldn't fish with this. It's too unsafe to fish with. So, like, getting the crush counter with it like, you can only even do that if you're fishing with it, so, like, it doesn't matter. You wouldn't use it like a punish, like, against the DP, and you wouldn't do it raw. She's got better things to do against the DP, and it's too risky to use raw. And that's kind of novel, though, being able to do something like that. Kind of interesting. Um, Let me see here. All right, I talked about all the ground and normals, I think. Oh, she's got the command normal. She's got at least one. She's got towards medium kick. I don't remember if she has any others. Um, oh yeah, back heart kick. I'm surprised I didn't think to mention that when I was talking about standing heart kick. Um, so she's got a move that looks a damn lot like stand heart kick. 
foot. She like puts her other foot back. Well, I guess it's the same foot, but she turns the other way. Um, it's unduckable, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, so you can't crouch this one. And also, the range is kind of good, but the frame data is like a million times worse. It's like a better poke, but you can't use it like a combo tool. Is this one Blizzard Heal? Is this one Icicle Stand? This one's Blizzard Heal. This one is... No, this one's Sniping Kick. Minus two, plus three. The frame data is not bad. It's just not um, super notable. It's just not Stan Run House, which is like, you know, you can link out of. It goes really far, and the fact that you can't crouch it makes it a lot better neutral. So it's like, between this and that, she actually has like pretty good pokes. And she can like keep out characters who want to approach like reasonably well. The hitbox on this is actually pretty tall too, so it's like you can hit jumps kind of preemptively, or even make them land on jumps. That being said, um, depending on the timing of their jump, this normal is out there for a while, um, and it is kind of weak to jump ins if you're not uh, if you don't happen to hit them. You can't do anything to like you know. It's very committal, basically. This is a very committal normal. You don't really want to poke with heavies in this game for the most part, unless they're really quick heavies like that one. Um, but it's like a it's like a pretty good normal. The damage is alright. Um, 15 frames start up. It's kind of a lot. And, you know, 21 frames of recovery is kind of a lot. So, like, you're doing this fucking kick for, like, almost a full second. Uh, let's see here. Um, it's so slow that you can't really anti-air with it. Or, like, you wouldn't want to, rather. You've got better anti-airs for all the ranges where it works. Like, regular stand hard kick. Um, and then what else? The towards medium kick. So this is actually maybe, maybe, maybe the best overhead in the game. Like, normal, normal, regular ass overhead. I guess technically speaking, there's like an Akali charged overhead too. And there's some special move overheads that are kind of busted. They're like Laura's fucking overhead V-Skill is kind of good too. But this is one of the better overheads. This is like an amazing overhead as they come. The startup is pretty fucking fast. It's, um, uh... 23. Never mind, that's fucking slow. Is that actually the startup? I thought it was faster than that. Um, I take it back. This is a very... This is... This is... That, <laughs> is that really 23? It feels really good. Um, it's got pretty good range. It's minus 6 like every other road in this game on block, so um, you got to space it kind of carefully, but the hitbox is kind of giant compared to most hitboxes for overheads in this game. Um, which is kind of cool. Uh, both hits are overhead, so, you know, if the opponent switches to crutch block on the second hit, and also it'll, like, go through armor or anything like that, uh, by merit of the fact that it's two hits. Uh, more importantly, I guess 23 frame overhead is fast in SF5. I'm used to fucking Dudley's, like, 15 frame overhead. Um, this is, a uh, plus one, and this character has a three frame normal. So, if you do that overhead into this crouch jab, it will beat anything the opponent does if the overhead hits. Not only that, but she can actually get, like, frame traps off of this. If the opponent's, like, a four-frame character, she can do, like, this into, like, stand jab, and it'll beat, like, anything the opponent does. She can do it to, like, stand forward, even. That won't be to reversal four-frame normal, but, like... Actually, it will be to reversal four-frame normal. Um... It's it's still her turn. Like, normally when you eat an overhead or when you block an overhead, you can just hit your fastest normal and be good. But, like, with this overhead, compared to every other overhead in the game, it's, like, it's still it's still her doing something. She forces you to, like, deal with pressure after eating an overhead, which is kind of good. Yeah, overhead into, like, walk back into whiff punish is really strong. Like, people are very... People are very reward... Or people are very pressured into doing a delayed, like, tech throw because she's plus. And if, if you just walk away and then just hit whatever you see, um, you can really easily react to like a, a throw tech and then just punish it with like a stand strong or a stand fierce or something like that. Overhead to shimmy is very, very useful for her. Um, and also, I feel like it's worth mentioning, but she has a special move that's like a step that I've been doing. And if you do the overhead from the step, it has a shit ton of forward momentum. So you can kind of overhead people from ranges where they're probably not used to being overheaded. It basically has, like, full screen range at the cost of kind of long startup. And that has identical frame data to the regular one. The only problem is it's impossible to space that one. 
Um, here's a kind of interesting little quirk it has. Despite the fact that it's two hits, the counter hit property applies to both hits. So even though it should be only plus one in this scenario, it's actually plus three, which this character has a three frame normal. So you can actually combo out of her overhead if it's a counter hit, which is not an unreasonable thing. Like it's not, it's, you can feasibly get this as a counter hit. And then if you do get it as a counter hit, you can get that, crouch stab into light hands, and the only other combo of note you can get, well you can get uh, that too. I was a bit far away. But that works as well. That's probably what you'd regularly go for. That's better than light hands anyway. And you can actually get, more, most importantly, uh, EX hands from it. And EX hands leads to everything with her. So being able to get an overhead and then combo into an EX move that leads to decent damage is actually pretty fucking strong. Um, uh, the only other thing I have to say about it, and this will be hard for me to show off, because I don't know actually the knockdowns that lead to it, but there's certain... There's certain like quick stand setups where you can time the overhead so it's you hit and then the ice ball hits and it's an overhead but the ice ball gobbles up your minus frames like the ice balls frame data overwrites the overheads frame data the overheads work that overheads are very long uh, very short blocks done to allow every character to um punish them um but your block stun is based on the last thing that hit you so if you get the overhead to connect and then get the ice ball to connect afterwards um you can actually get not only do you have a safe overhead but you have a safe overhead that you can then link out of so there's like very specific setups where you can do that into like a into a well-timed overhead and then combo out of the overhead and it's pretty it's pretty insane you can do like media overhead into ice ball hitting into stand strong for example um and that's like that's that's low risk decent mix up high reward if you time it right but of course there's always the possibility if you time it wrong that you're going to get the second hit of that to connect after the ice ball or something like that that makes you minus 6 which is you know you want to avoid that if possible but overall like it's a pretty it's a pretty good overhead with a lot of potential um and almost is there much to say her cross up is like kick her jump medium kick uh does not cross up despite looking a lot like a cross up it does go pretty far Yes, not re not super far, not even as far as I thought it went. Um, I basically only see Colleen's do two air normals ever. I don't see that one. I don't see that one. I don't see. I occasionally see that one as like a jump back normal. I've used that one myself quite a lot because uh, her anti air game is kind of bad. So a jumping jab is like not a bad thing to do. Um, it's better than a jump short from a hitbox from an air to air hitbox perspective. Uh, jump short is a cross up, so you use that one as a cross up if you want to cross the opponent up. Hit stun is kind of bad, block stun is kind of bad, the damage is kind of bad, but you know, having a cross up at all is kind of good. Uh, and then jump hard kick is one of the better air normals in the game, if not, like, one of the best. The hitbox is very fucking tall. So you can do it really, really early, and just, like, hit the opponent from really high up. Like that. And this can fuck with a lot of anti-airs. It can hit the opponent before they're ready to be hit. Like, a lot of people will, like, buffer a DP, and then, like, just get hit during their buffer, because of just how fucking tall it is. Her jump already resolves, like, decently quickly, and then she's got just a very tall hitbox attack that can just hit someone, like, fairly easily. I don't think she can hit with that on the way up or anything like that. Not even on tall characters. But, like, just doing that really early just forces the opponent to be in block stun earlier, or hit stun. So you can hit people, um... It basically makes your jump a little bit safer. The earlier you hit people, the early, the safer it can be. And technically speaking, I don't remember if it actually can cross up or not. I think it can. In very specific scenarios. Maybe in the corner with a, like, hard, hard uh, vanity step or something like that. I think it can cross up. But more importantly, there's a very specific range where you'll hit the opponent on the front and then land behind them. Which is the most dirty bullshit that you can get in this game. If you can actually find that spacing. Yeah. They can hit in front and let her land behind. And that's just based on how fucking tall it is. It's kind of hard to find that spacing, but there's setups that... Like, if you if you play this character a lot... Like, I, I think I just did it. If you play this character a lot, you'll be able to find those spots fairly well. Um, but that's basically... If you can find that range, or if you can find a pixel behind that range, you basically got a true mix-up by making the opponent block an air normal. Which is kind of strong. And she has a lot of knockdown setups, so like, you know, if you can find time for that jump, if the opponent doesn't quick stand, she's got one of the better, 
if not the best, like, ambiguous cross-up mix-ups in this game, based on that, which is kind of cool. Not as good as, like, John Lee. But, like, pretty strong. Um, and then she's got this thing. She doesn't have any air special moves on the thing. Um, what else? I guess we talk about special moves now. She's got a hands move. You can do it just by mashing hands, mashing punches. You wouldn't do that. You can do it if you really wanted to, I guess. You can also do it by quarter circle forward punch. Light one is minus four, but that minus four is like, like you know, the good kind of minus four. It does, it does not automatically put you point blank like a lot of minus four attacks will. You can space it to make it safe. Uh, a very common example is, um, I think two light normals actually makes it safe. That might still be punishable. That's like hard to punish already. That kind of moved me in again. I know there's like a, a normal, there's a very ordinary, there's a very common little sequence people do that like makes a, a very, very specific range that's like really, really hard to punish, but I can't think of the sequence. It might just be two jabs. But minus four, like, only line almost can already hit that. And, like, with the right spacing, if you just use it from, like, you can use it raw. It's, like, a pretty fast special move. Um, don't miss that last hit, though, because that last hit makes it a lot more unsafe. But, like, um, it can be really hard, if not impossible, for most characters to punish, which lets you get a lot of free chip damage and um, be annoying. And being annoying is always good in this game. Um, the medium one is unsafe by quite a lot. The hard one is unsafe by a fuck lot. The EX one is also minus four. You can react to the hard one, but telling the light one from the medium one is actually kind of hard. They look pretty similar. Um, but the hard one has this big old hit at the end, and the whole thing's a true block string, so the opponent can just react to that big old hit and get a big old punish on you. I think it's like minus eight or something like that. It might be worse than that. What is this move called? Parabellum, I think? Minus nine. Yeah. The medium one is plus four. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Can you link out of it? No, it's way too far. That doesn't work. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that'd be really cool if you could link out of that. That'd be like Chun Li with her medium legs into crutch like kick, stuff like that. Can you stop doing? The, can you stop mashing the hard one and not do the big hit? No. Um, if you're doing mashing to even activate it, you're probably just not getting the hard one because the light and medium one don't have the big hit, but the hard one always has the big hit. The big hit's pretty good. Let me actually say right now, before I forget, that the big hit cancels the super. So this is an entire... The special move hits it in, in its entirety, and you can still combo like the super afterwards. So that makes a kind of strong combo. Just by itself, that was 400. Let's take a theoretical, like, jump in combo. Am I on counter hit? No. Okay. This is what Colleen jumping combos actually look like. So there's somewhere in there almost 500, I think. 478, not that good, but like good enough. That's like her optimal combo avenue, I think. Most of her other super combo avenues are incredibly weak. So if you're trying to land super, that's like the best way you can do it that doesn't involve V-Trigger. Um, let me think. What else about hands? You can badger people with it, with the light one. Um, you can link into the light one from like stuff, I guess, from light normals. Um... The medium one you basically don't see. You see it in some juggles, I guess, and you also see it from say medium kick. But generally speaking, if you can land that, you would instead just land um, the target combo, since that builds that does more damage and builds V meter. But you see it in like some juggles, I guess. Like you just you see it in what's what's like a you see it like uh, like this. That uses the medium hands. That's like a common combo that she uses. Um, so you see it in certain juggles. Um, and the anti-air counter hit, Samurai House, medium hands works there pretty well. Um, but medium one you don't see that much. The hard one you just see it's like a general ender in places where you can land it, but you can't land it that often and it's minus, so you've got to confirm it. But like, the, obviously I was showing off that combo into hard hands works. And then also any jab target combo into hard hands also works. Those are like the main two. And if you get, like, a successful ice ball, it's very common to do something into hard hands. That's, like, the completion. Technically, you can do it to another ice ball. Those are, like, your best enders. Ice ball and hard hands. If you can land either one, um, you want to land one of those two. Hard hands does more damage. Ice ball is just better for other reasons. But, like, if you want damage, 
hard hands is like what you're trying to land. Um, EX hands is one of the best EX moves in the game, to be 100% honest, and it's probably where you should pour most of your meter. I don't know, she actually has some decent like ways of using meter. Um, EX hands increases your damage by quite a lot. Let's say I'm just landing Stain Fierce, and I want to get as much damage as I can out of it. If I just get hard hands, that's 180. Remember that number. If I get EX hands, that's 277. I just added 90 damage with an EX bar. That's better than most characters in this game can do. 100, almost 100 damage. Um, so that's nice. It adds a shit ton of damage to already like optimal combos. And then when you look at like the combos where her combo avenues aren't as good, like uh, low strong stand forward, where you can't do, you can only do generic combo. This is the damage optimal under 269. Okay, remember that number. Whereas my other combo does 187. So we're adding a shit ton of damage there, and this is where it really shines. Um, combos off of lights, okay? If I do a light normal combo, like crouch short, crouch jab, that did fucking 78, plus a meaty. 78. If you, I do EX hands here, I'm getting a shit ton of extra damage. 202. It's like 130 more. 120 more. Um, and that's really important, those combos, because she has a lot of ways of landing light normals. And like her hair completions off of light normals are very important because of that. Because you've got this as a way of landing light normals. You've got this. You've got like the lows. Um, I think there's another one still. A lot of her links are into like a light. But like if you can complete those combos with your EX hands, it just adds a shit ton of damage. So let's talk about EX hands. So when it lands, it actually ends with like a launcher. And you can just combo straight out of that launcher. Um, but you can also cancel the launcher. And cancelling the launcher has a lot of different... There's actually a lot of stuff you can do with that. Um, I haven't talked about it yet, but she's got basically a command dash. And using that launcher... You can cancel that launcher into the command dash, and there's a few things you can do with that. Um, the general one is to combo into the... Uh, jumping command dash. And then go into her air throw, which I should have mentioned sooner because she has an air throw. It's pretty good. It's one of the... It's it's a pretty good air throw. Knocks down. Um, pretty good damage. Pretty good stun. That's her max damage ender, always, I think, in the corner or mid-screen. It's to go into the hard version of that and then grab. Um, in the corner, it's pretty much the best thing she can do. Her combos are actually limited by the corner in this context. Let me actually show off, like, well, that works. Just take my word for it. I'll try one more time. Um, I'll show off where she kind of falters here. So if you're mid-screen, uh, you can do, uh, what? You can do combos until, like, medium vanity step. And then if you get medium vanity step, you can do a sweep for some good corner carry and oki, okay, I guess. Uh, you can do sweep and then cancel the hit. The first set of sweep keeps the juggle state, which is, this is, like, the main use of sweep for this character. Um, that's not EX. I shut off medium hands, which gives decent corner carry, decent damage, and um, uh, good Oki. Um, you can also do uh, into the ice ball, you got a meaty ice ball like that. Um, success rates vary based on whether the opponent back rolls or doesn't quick stand or uh, neutral quick stands. Um, there's a little bit of tricks to that. Generally speaking, if it's me, I always do the grab ender, to be honest. Um, I think you can also... I thought that worked. Maybe not. Um, you can also go into uh, an EX version. Or let me actually talk about the light one as well, because I think that works too. I don't think you would do that. Yeah. That might work in the corner with a delayed cancel. Um, you can do, go into the EX light one, and then do the follow-up from that, and I think that does quite good damage. What's the trick? What's the combo there? I think it has the crouch roundhouse too. So it's medium vanity step into crouch roundhouse, into light vanity step into punch. I think that's the combo. But I think it's EX. Might be EX only. I don't remember how this combo goes. That that was it. So that's like a decent... That's two bars. But that's like a pretty good damage output for two bars. Like, sh most characters can't do two bar combos at all. But that's like a thing that she can do with two bars. 
I don't think you can do it with one bar. I don't think there's a combo variation of that. There might be. Can't think. Maybe with V-Trigger as well. Two bars, EX hands, EX light ice ball, light vanity. Oh yeah, that's it. That's the combo. I was trying to think of that. I tried to juggle it. But you can actually cancel the up hit into an ice ball, which doesn't combo with the normal one, but it combos with the EX one. That was really, really fast. It was still really, really fast. There might be a forward dash in there, actually. Well, that wasn't... I, I moved the wrong way. Let me just walk forward. I think that's how I always used to do it. That was way slow. I liked this combo a lot right at the beginning. And then I forgot it existed. There you go. 270, 450. Was that less than the one we just saw? 282. Yeah, that actually did more damage. Very interesting. Do do that combo. <laughs> Don't do any of these combos for the most part. It's not like they added like a really significant amount of damage. This is an unscaled context, and the air grab already does almost as much. 280, keep that number in mind. And also wait until I actually hit this grab. 208. So that was actually a pretty fucking big damage increase for the extra bar. Anything about 50, I generally say, can be worth it. Nice. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. There's some stuff to that. There's some stuff. That was like still a decent damage up in post increase. 400. 397. Remember 400 damage. Three fifty. I'm getting right around fifty damage, a little bit less. It's not bad. It's not a not a bad use of bar. So she has an okay one bar combo, or like good one bar combos, and then like also good like two bar combos. So that's kind of unique. Um, and then there's one other thing you can do that's kind of notable. Um, you can actually do an ex medium, which I haven't done. In, no ex hard. Um, and that gives you kind of a different jump than the regular hard one. It's not as tall. It doesn't really look that different. But technically speaking. Um, if you do the EX hands into EX jump, um, all of your, I don't know if it's all of your normals, but like some of your normals have juggle potential, and jump medium kick is the one I always see, I think because it's the most consistent or else it might be the only one that works. But this is like a two bar reset, and a lot of people aren't really ready for stuff that you can do following. You can get like media attacks in, you can do like media overhead, you can do like, like cross under stuff, you can do like, um, deep connects of attacks. Um, I think there's actually some corner stuff where you can actually like go through the opponent. Uh, I thought there was. Yeah, there's like some shenanigans there. That looks kind of committal, so it might not actually work that well. And that costs two bars to even do. You can't do it with the regular. Like, it, you're too tall, it won't work. You don't have the juggle potential on your attack. So there's like a special thing that happens when you burn that two bars, where your air normals have juggle potential there. Otherwise, you can't get that jump medium kick to connect. You need that very low arc that the EX1 has. Um, but she's got like some two-bar shenanigans you can do in the corner. Um, and it actually works mid-screen too, I suppose. But in the corner, it's particularly potent because people aren't really expecting that kind of sneaky cross-under walking. And you can also fake the cross-under walking and get them on the, on the first side if you want to. Um, it's very hard to react to. It's the important thing. I've been talking about EX hands a lot. It's just, Basically, it's got a good ender anyway. And then it's also got... Um, meaty crutch, medium punch, or whiff stand like kick to cross up. That's it. Stand like kick has a big old forward step. If you cross up, you're unsafe though. Wrong version. Yeah. You whiff that, and all of a sudden you're on the other end. That's less committal than a forward dash anyway. But if the opponent does reversal something or other, they're going to hit you. But who's going to get a full combo in that context? And they're probably going to be focusing on blocking given the setup itself. And given the fact that your alternative setup is a meaty. <laughs> um, but she's got some like nice shenanigans there, that's the point. But two bars is the price you pay. Um, what other special moves are we going to talk about? I guess we should talk about Vanity Step because I've been doing it like crazy. She's got three different Vanity Steps. The light one is... Um, she just takes a step back. Uh, the main use of the light one, I'm going to say, is that she... 
doesn't do anything afterwards, which is important if you've got the kind of trigger happy opponents who are going to mash DP as soon as they see you do the vanity step. You can do the light vanity step and then, you know. It's important to have that one that doesn't necessarily carry a whole lot of risk to it. Technically speaking, it's got quite a lot of invincibility and also a big back step. I don't think the invincibility is from frame one. If you exit, it is. But even the light one has a decent amount of invincibility. It's just not instant invincibility. But again, I'm pretty sure the X one is. The only problem is that both of these take a big step backwards, so things get kind of awkward and hairy when she gets in the corner. But um, she's got a little bit of an evasive, and also they're both throwable. So it's not like it's just a clear, like, you know, wake up action. Um, they're just unhittable. But it does have a bit of invincibility, so, like, theoretically, if someone, like, pokes you with, like, a low poke, I think it can actually whiff against this just because it's invincible for a bit. It only has one follow up for the light one. Um, it's like a punch. There's nothing indicating this punch is invincible to fireballs. But this punch is actually invincible to fireballs. I think even if you don't EX it, it's kind of hard. It requires prediction to actually use this. Your best hope against the fireball character is to just spam it non fucking stop. And then anytime you see. You can't do the whole step into follow up on reaction to a fireball. You'll just get hit by the fireball. But, like, um, if you're just doing it. If you happen to do this as you see a fireball, you can do the punch on reaction, I think. But, like, that's not. That's already not very good. I think with EX it becomes more feasible because it goes a lot farther. But even then, it's like already not very good. It's like a prediction, because you can't just do the EX one like crazy. Technically speaking, with some fireballs, you can see the fireball on reaction, like EX step into punch and still punish it. But that's almost no fireballs in this game. So it's like, they tried to give her like an anti-fireball tool, but in practice, it's like nearly useless as an anti-fireball tool. Um, you can use it in combos a little bit. I shot off one of them earlier. The EX step into punch follow-up uh, has a shit ton of juggle potential. Most of her attacks have no juggle potential. She has very little juggle potential as a character. Um, generally, you're just going to get a few hits of hands or a V-Skill. Um, but technically speaking, the step into punch has like a lot, like a lot more than the other ones. V-Skill punch is only, or V-Skill is only like J JP1. And the hands are just JP1 plus whatever hit they are. Um, but this one has like JP like fucking like 15 or some bullshit. It's got like quite a lot. It'll juggle in almost any context where the opponent's airborne. Um, it cancels the super. I guess you could do like a combo like um, that doesn't work. I don't think there actually is a variation of that combo that works. Now that I'm thinking about it. It does cancel the super, right? Yeah. I have to double check because I haven't done that combo in forever because there's almost no context where she uses that combo. Technically speaking, I guess you could do something like um, um, that into super, for example, or like that one doesn't work, does it? That is not my combo. Ugh, if that worked, that would be really cool. Honestly. I bet she had that during development. But whatever. Bad, shitty combo. Trigger, LK, Vanity Punch, CA in the corner. Yeah, that's like the, the context where I usually see it. Is... is if you get like a, a V-Trigger, you can juggle into this in certain contexts. Three hits makes it easier. There's like a, a range where it works really well. You can automatically space yourself to that range using certain combos. I don't remember if that's one of them. I think it works even if you only get two hits. But I want three. I'll try it with just two. Yeah, that still works. And that's like damage optimal. If you get like a V-Trigger combo in the corner. Uh, oh, maybe it only works if you get two hits. Yeah, actually it removes your juggle potential. Oh, how awful. Well, whatever. Um, what's my combo here? Accident. Did that connect in full? No, I didn't. I'm just bad. Give it a couple more tries. There you go. Something like that. <laughs> For the damage maximization goblins out there who want to get all that damage. That's still not like a super ton. Uh, but breaking 500 is kind of notable in this game. It's not super notable, but like most characters can barely break 500 with their optimal combos. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, it does super cancel, which is rarely useful. Um, the X1 has a lot more fireball invincibility and also travels further. It actually does pretty good damage too. I'm getting a counter hit, so it's falsely inflated, but it's like quite high anyway. 160. It's a respectable amount of damage. Even the regular one is 100. It's like not weak. Um, it's kind of hard to combo into. 
like, yeah, we shut off a couple juggles. There's a couple more that I'm not showing off. Um, but for the most part, it's not something you can easily land. Um, but that's optional. That's the main thing I have to say about the light vanity step, is the follow-up is optional. But there's only one follow-up. If you use the medium vanity step, you get this big old dash. And this is probably the best one, in general. Um, it lets you kind of artificially... It's basically a big old shimmy, I suppose. You can do like... Um, uh, you can do like strings, and then cancel into vanity step. And you're kind of out of the way for a little bit if they're doing reversal normals, and then all of a sudden you're back in there, and you can like be hitting like, you know, buttons again. I have people like get hit by stuff like that all the time. You can use this a lot in footsies. The only problem is it's kind of committal. If the opponent sees the back step, they might try and sweep it or like hit you out of it or something like that. It's kind of hard to hit on reaction. If you're looking for it, it's quite easy to just counter poke with like a button, with like any button you have, any fast button. And I think if she gets hit out of the dash, she's actually counter hit, right? I think so. So it's not free. It's not risk. It's not without risk. It's more like Ken's like step punch or step kick dashes. But it's still a, a dash that you can cancel into, even if it's fucking slow and reactable. And there's also the possibility you're just cancelling into the one that doesn't move back forward. So it's like, there's a bit of trickery to it. It's not useless. It's actually quite good. Um, but you've got to be kind of careful with it. It's definitely not free. Um, one notable thing I talked about... There's two notable things about this. One is that, I talked about it earlier, you carry forward momentum from your actions. So certain combos that don't normally work, suddenly work. Like, I think she can get three jabs if she, she does it like that. Like, like that. I don't know if that works. No. But you can get, like, three jabs. You can do, like, certain combos that don't normally work. Um. Because you're kind of closer to the opponent than you normally are. Like that. It's kind of cool. She's still moving forward as she hits the opponent, so she gets closer as they get pushed back. So she keeps... She, there's just a little bit of... And it's quite consistent, actually. It seems like it wouldn't be consistent, but it is. Um, the other kind of quirky thing that she has, and of course that forward momentum gets carried to some of her normals. I don't know about that one. Yeah, that one too. Not that you would ever do that. Um, the other quirky thing about it is she actually, she actually has target combos out of it. And the target combos are actually pretty cool. She's got three. Um, you got crutch like kick, crutch hard kick, which, for the best that I can tell, is pretty fucking useless. Um, it's really, really, really unsafe on block, and the crutch hard kick is like the normal crutch hard kick, and that you can cancel it. Um, but you can only cancel it on block, and you can't cancel it to be trigger or anything else on, or you can only cancel it on hit. You can't cancel it on block at all. So the opponent blocks it, they, it's just, your point blank, you can't space it. It's your ass on a silver platter. But it's a double low, which is kind of cool. Um, she's also got this one, which is unique. Um, crutch, like hit, crutch, hard punch. And that's a pretty fast normal, and it's a pretty strong little sequence. And you can cancel that crutch, hard punch into some pretty damaging little combos. That's the optimal one. Um, but it doesn't cancel on block. Proof of concept. Um, which I guess lets you fucking option select a little bit. But, um, more importantly, that little combo, that little sequence is like minus six... What is that one called? I don't know the names of her little fucking TCs. She's got three of them. In this, in this, from this frost step. Crouch like kick. Br 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 brinicle? Someone look up what a brinicle is. This one's minus eight. It's plus two on hit. The plus two on hit is absolutely useless. The uh, minus eight is kind of a big problem. The last one she has is actually pretty busted, and to be honest, I never ever see Colleen players use it, despite the fact that it's the best one by far. It's crutch medium punch, crutch hard punch. And unlike the others, this is only minus two. So it's totally safe. Uh, again, it only cancels on hit. It does not cancel on block. But here, that actually helps, because you can just, every single time, you can just cancel it to hard hands or something like that, EX hands. You can just always do that, and it won't come out unless it works. Option selects. And it actually does really good fucking damage. It's 141 damage for those two hits. So technically speaking, like, this is her main... This is her max damage. Like, off of, uh... Um... Off of, like, anything. Like, technically, she can do more with, like, this. That is 134. Actually, that might not even do more. 
141. Yeah, this actually does more damage than that sequence. Unfortunately, you can't follow a jump in with this, so it's still not more. Because, you know, you can do jump in into that. And you can't do jump in into... But it's like super damage optimal. The damage is actually really high. For the same amount of scaling, no less. I keep on missing that. Normally in real matches, I just mash the fuck out of the, the throw. Um, minus two. And it's plus five. But I've never even tried to link out of that plus five. Neat. Didn't even know that. kind of cool. If you can do a stand forward there, that's kind of crazy. Ah, oh, I got all hype. If you can do a stand forward, that would be a really crazy sequence. Ah, oh, shame. Uh, but the stand light kick there is kind of cool. Not that you would ever do it. But like this, if, you, if you're just cancelling, you know, if you're just throwing out, like, if you're like, if you see that you're being blocked, you can just do, like, something like that, and then go for that little confirm. The only problem is it's coming from a 6 frame normal, so sometimes you want to do, like, a crouch jab just to make sure you're kind of hitting whatever they're going for, if they're trying to preempt your little dash stuff. Um, it's safest just to do, like, you know, that into crouch jab. You can do stay medium kick on crouchers there. Oh my fucking god, I should have tried that immediately. I figured that would force stand, but I guess it doesn't. Oh my god, that is so cool looking. I didn't know about that combo. That's really neat. That is some very neat stuff right there. It would be really, really cool if you could do that after like a crush counter button. Or something. But to the best that I can tell, you can't. There's like no way to link into this in time. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about mini Benity step. You just do it. You can just cancel into it at any time. And then kind of get some shenanigans on the opponent. Catch them whiffing buttons. But it's kind of risky too because you can get counter hit. And then there's some, you know, um, there's some trickery with it. Off of like lows and stuff. Where's my job? There you go. There's a more practical confirm. Of course, you've got the much higher damage ones, but they're so unsafe that I wouldn't do them. Nice fucking ice ball. Um, hard vanity step is a bit more particular. It's kind of good too. Um, the biggest advantage it has, it jumps. The biggest advantage it has is if people are trying to preempt you on the ground. If they're trying to, if you're doing like crutch medium kick or crutch medium punch to hit me from my medium vanity step, I'm gonna be jumping. That being said, it's so fucking slow that sometimes they can whiff a button like a low button and then still anti air you. It's like not very fast at all. It's like slower than a normal jump. Um, it looks like it has the same startup, but technically speaking, um, various factors, which I'm still not 100% sure on, uh, camera tracking at least, various factors actually distinguish it from um, the others. So a very, very keen eye who plays Colleen all the time will be able to spot the difference and tell which one you're about to do. The light one doesn't take a, as big a step. The distance of the step of the medium one and the hard one appears to be identical, but the camera tracks are a lot more aggressively for the for the heavy one compared to the to the medium one. I don't know if that's true if the opponent's cornered. Um, her jump is just a normal jump, to the best that I can tell. She does have a very tall jump hard kick, and this is probably the reason. So you can like come down with a jump hard kick and actually hit them. Uh, she's got a bit more forward momentum than normal compared to her regular jumps, and she's a bit lower. I don't know if that makes it easier or harder to get the cross-up from non-cross-up air attack. Um, the light kick is generally really good here. And so the light kick is generally really good here. And so is the uh, down medium kick, because that can hit people trying to catch you like the punishes and whatnot. That little sequence can be good for getting out of corners, I suppose. Um, where was it? Something like that. I don't know. That didn't get me that far out, did it? Um... I don't have a whole lot to say about the hard one. It's it's mostly used in like her combos. The hard one is kind of even more committal than the medium one, which is already uncomfortably committal. I don't think you're kind of hit if you're hit out of the hard one, but you are kind of hit if you're hit out of the medium one. And I think only the light one has invincibility on the back step for what it's worth. I don't think they all do. Um, I didn't 
I don't think I mentioned EX medium like at all. But you can EX the medium one, which makes it a lot faster, which makes it less risky. And you can also EX the hard one, which makes it faster and theoretically less risky. To be honest, I never ever see people EX either of those. They don't give a concrete thing for their meter spend, so like, I don't know. There's not like, like this one, the light one actually gives you like a definitive, that, that goes a lot farther and does a lot more damage. But these still have like the same follow-ups. They're just quicker. If you could do that, I think I tested for combos like this. It would be really cool if you could do stuff like this. But to the best that I can tell, you can't. It's a shame. I got really hyped for fucking some of Colleen's tools, but they didn't really work in the way I was expecting them to. And I got sad. Um... Whatever, that's all I have to say about Vanity Step. What else? I haven't even talked about the counter at all. Let's talk about the Ice Ball. I've been doing it quite a lot. This is a very strange move. So, she... It's got an initial hit that kind of looks like an uppercut. And that hit knocks down, and it's also very fucking fast. It combos from lights. Um, it, the hit's the same no matter which version you use. It does, like, um, 60 damage, I think. 50 damage. Um, and that's it. EXing it does not change that hit. It's still the same hit no matter what. Um, after she does that little hit, there's a little speck in the air where an ice ball eventually forms. And the ice ball is a projectile, and it's a pretty interesting projectile. It, like, lands on the opponent. It's a very slow projectile, I guess, and it also ignores all other projectiles in the game. I guess you could theoretically destroy it with a Hadouken if it happened to land into a Hadouken. But I've never actually seen it interact with another fireball, so I don't know if it's like a kunai or what. Uh, notably, that little swipe she does, the uppercut, is a fireball, so if there's an incoming Hadouken or something like that, she can swipe it out of the air, while also getting her own fireball on the screen. So that's pretty nice in a fireball war against a defensive character. It's, like, better than it sounds. But the startup of the uh, ice ball is kind of slow, like the startup of that little swipe. So it can be really hard to do that against certain Hadoukens, where you can throw hard Hadoukens a lot against Colleen, and she doesn't really have a good answer to them. But like a nice light Hadouken like this is fairly easy to swipe on reaction. I feel like I feel like that swipe should hit fireballs a lot sooner than it does. It would give her a better option against fireball characters. But already this is like a pretty neat thing that she has against fireball characters, where she can swipe a fireball out of the air and then force them to eat a fireball, force them to block a fireball more accurately that they um, can't preempt. Like if we threw another fireball immediately, he would just eat that ice ball, and I'd be able to block his other fireball. So in a, in a fireball war, it's a thing that you have, but it's not like a win button. It's not even like a fucking tie button. And it's not very good against fast fireballs so that'll hit you before you can even get the swipe off unless you're absolutely full screen. And just people varying up their fireball speeds can also fuck with you because you can't react in time to get that swipe to hit. So she's got like two kind of bad answers to fireball. She's got this step in the punch and she's got this fucking ice ball. Um, the ice ball, outside of like, you know, that... As like a meaty tool, it's fucking fantastic. It's one of the better meaty tools in the game. Um, she's got a lot of knockdowns, even just the swipe by itself, where if the opponent quick stands, they're recovering into the ice ball. And that recovery into the ice ball, like that's not Colleen, that's the ice ball. So like even if you hit Colleen, even if you woke up with a button, like you at best trade. And the ice ball is not it's not horribly weak. And then if the ice ball hits and Colleen isn't in block stun or hit stun or anything like that. She can actually combo out of it without too much difficulty. It's like quite frame advantage. You can just link out of it like without too much trouble at all. Um, so it's not super risky to throw out. This is like a thing that a lot of Colleen players just like you know kind of do in foots footsies. It's like not a bad footsie tool. You do have to aim it kind of precisely, and it has some dead zones. Um, uh, the most important thing I didn't mention this at all. If you hit her, like here or like here. The ice ball hasn't formed yet, and if you hit her, the ice ball will never form. So, uh, if for example you block this, which is like minus 8 or 10 or something, um, you can just punish it, and you don't have to be afraid of like eating the ice balls during your punish. Let's get Ryu doing like a reversal normal of some variety. I'm pretty sure I have at least one of those. Got five. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, see, the ice ball never came out, and also that was a punish. Um. The EX one, the ice balls form a lot faster. They have juggle potential. I think they already have juggle potential, but like, um, they form a lot faster. And then, um, I think if you get hit, they still form. Or at least one of them still forms. 
So, theoretically, if Ryu was trying to preempt me, I would be able to get some pretty good damage here. Um, not like that. See, that all comboed. I comboed that from the Ice Ball. On reaction to me getting hit by Ryu's counterattack, I got a full combo on him. So EX Ice Ball is a lot better. And you can steer EX Ice Ball too. I've been doing uh, Light Plus Medium, which is generally the best one. But you can do Medium Plus Heavy or Light Plus Heavy to get them to go further away from yourself. There is no dead zone on this one, I don't think. This one you can get them to hit the opponent basically no matter where they are. Just because it's a lot bigger. It's pretty good on... Like, it's the EX one is pretty good up close. Um, but then, again, certain things the opponent does can always fuck you up. Like, if I if Ryu swept on reaction, I don't know if I have that. What's Mouse doing on screen? When did that happen? When actually did that happen? Alright, we got a low strong. Is this fast enough to punish? Yes. If Ryu did, like, a sweep, he would come out ahead on damage. And there's probably some things where you could do, like, a heavy DP or something like that that might move under the ice balls and he'd never take damage at all. So there's certain things certain characters can do where they can, like, avoid the follow-up or avoid the ice balls. Um, but they can't preempt them the way they can with the light one. As a general rule, her max damage is hands as an ender, but um, it's often good to end with an ice ball instead because the ice ball carries momentum into your next sequence. So like if the opponent quick stands, I get some guaranteed pressure and then I can use that ice ball like to cover like a jump or like something like that and get some white damage, get a mix-up going. Um, if the opponent back rolls, like, you can use the medium or the light, depending on the context, to have that tag him. Um, she has more problems with opponents that don't quickstand than, the, than opponents that do, which is kind of backwards for most characters. It's usually, like, not really a problem if the opponent quickstands. Or if the opponent doesn't quickstand, it's usually like, oh, I, I get something dirty instead of nothing. Um, but here, this is actually, like, a thing that she has to kind of contend with. But, like, media ice balls are very easy to get. The, the This by itself, it's 50 damage instead of 100 as your ender, like, scaled. So you lose quite a bit of damage, but, like, ending with the Ice Ball um, can kind of get some more pressure going, which is kind of cool. Um, it kind of falls apart a bit at the corner. Um, I think no Ice Ball will hit in the corner. Maybe after certain sequences you can get, like, an Ice Ball to connect. Uh, she always takes a step forward for the Ice Ball, so there's really not that much you can do. Oh, um, let me actually say before I forget that if you happen to get a Dizzy on an opponent, um, you can actually increase the damage of your combo with, like, an Ice Ball. So, like, if I got a Dizzy, I'd be able to, like, back up to, like, here, and then do an Ice Ball, and then I'd be able to do a jumping combo. Um, my spacing was not so good, was it? It's always a little bit more than I think it is. That was... Well, that hit at the same time. So you can use that to squeeze out a little bit of extra damage. It always adds damage to the best that I can tell. Even in, like, regardless of the scaling, it seems to add on damage. So she's got that, which is pretty cool. Um, what else? Oh, um, I forgot to mention, but I'd like to mention right now that her combo game... Like, mid-screen, if you do EX hands into medium vanity step, you can get sweep afterwards and then do some stuff from that. Including, like, cancels to ice ball for medies, or uh, medium hands for juggles, or, like, um, some other stuff. You actually can't do that in the corner. Regardless of timing, that will whiff. So her combo options are a bit more limited in the corner. Main ender I usually see is just EX hands into the jump into the grab. She like doesn't have her two bar combo there. She doesn't have a lot of stuff there. That's like the main thing you have. Anyway, what else? Oh, um, well, I guess that's all I've got to say for Ice Ball. It's good neutral. It, like, lets you get some damage and be annoying. Um, if you happen to see it connect, you can pick up a combo with, like, a poke. Um, or, like, just, like, a, if it's far away, maybe you can get, like, raw hard hands. That one, I did it really far away. But, like, it's not, it's a feasible thing. Yeah, I lost it. Don't, I'm, try, like, trying to push the limits. Don't, don't be like me. There you go. More practical. Um, it's good as a meaty tool, as a combo ender, as a pressure tool. It's very common for Colleen players to use it. Um, technically speaking, you can end with the EX1 for even better meaty, but you're relying on the opponent to quick stand. If the opponent didn't quick stand, you don't get a meaty at all, and you just burned a bar. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'll talk about parry. So she's got this move. 
It's pretty interesting. Um, it's actually very fucking notable. It's a counter. It's a bit like Gokens. Um, one of them parries all air attacks, I guess. One of them parries all grounded overheads, mids, whatever. One of them parries all lows. And that can get kind of picky. Like, if you're if you're Mika, an uncharged and hard kick is considered a grounded normal. So you parry it with the medium one. But, like, a charged hard kick is considered, like, an air normal. So you parry it with the hard one. So it can it can be kind of stupid. You just kind of learn which what's what. Um, generally, it's just, like, this is as an anti-air, and this is, like, grounded stuff. But certain overheads you have to parry with the high one, because they, like, leave the ground. I don't know, it's kind of stupid. But they, like, put a flag on every move in the game that one of these parries will work on all of them. Uh, it's throwable no matter what. If you throw her, she gets thrown. The window isn't super long for the parry. It's pretty long. It's like it's it seems to grab attacks within a pretty big window. Um, but if it's got kind of a lot of recovery after that window, and also she's crush counter punishable. If you hit her, it's a it's a counter hit. It's gonna take a pretty good player. Like if Ryu like you know hits me and then I do this all of a sudden, it it would take a pretty good Ryu to hit me with hard kick in time to like punish it. But if you fight a lot of Colleen players, that Ryu will absolutely exist. Like there there are there are people who are ready to see that counter, and then go for their counter hit punishes. Um, it starts in two frames before you get the counter hit frames, so it's actually insanely fucking fast. Like for comparison, um, if I if I'm facing like an opponent with like a two frame frame trap, I'm like the only character in the game who can interrupt that two frame frame trap meterless. That is like a completely unique thing that she can do. No other character can do that. No other character can contest two frame frame traps at all. Um, so like if Ryu did like stand strong, stand short. Which I guess I could give him right now. I don't know what's. I don't know how wide that is actually, but let's just do it. There you go. I think this should work. Yeah, pow. Um, I hit him. Let me actually calculate how fucking big of a window that is. So that's Ryu's stand strong is like plus one or like plus two. I don't actually remember. Hold on, I'm opening up Ryu. Plus one into a four frame button. So that was the three frame window. Man, that wasn't even that big. I should do I should have done Ryu stand light punch into stand like kick. That would have been two frames. It's never too late, baby. Ah, oh, I was I was not ready. I need like a reversal. Oh, I actually got counter hit. There we go. Reversal. How? Pretty cool, right? So, despite the fact that she's got kind of iffy reversal options, um, this is actually like a completely unique thing that no other character has. She can break frame traps. Like, it's insanely annoying. If generally, generally, it's impossible to make a one frame window, one frame frame trap. Um, so she can just like a lot of characters just don't have a good sequence into a low. So like if you're doing like your your frame trap sequences with like you know stand jab stand strong or something like that, um, you've got to check your swing a lot. You've got to check your confirms against uh, uh, Colleen because she can just do a counter in the middle of your sequence and just interrupt you. Whereas most characters can't do anything to contest the frame trap. She can actually get like a lot of damage on you. 180 damage, 250 stun. It's like really rewarding to actually land a counter. Um, but she does have to pick the direction right. So if Ryu was, if I was fighting a Ryu, he could do like stand light punch into like, I don't know, stand light kick or stand light punch into crouch light kick. But that kind of mix up is really shitty for Ryu. Ryu would rather just do stand light punch by itself or like you know try and bait the counter some way just by watching him waiting. Light punch, watch wait. That's like the general way you deal with it. It's quite risky for the Colleen player, but it's kind of notable because it forces the opponent to kind of think about to not mindlessly go for pressure, whereas she's other, otherwise very weak to pressure because her reversal options besides this are basically non-existent. Um, and it is weak to throws. You can just throw any version of them, so if the opponent does like jab into throw, um, it's not as bad as getting crush countered, but it's still like, you know, she can't do anything about the opponent throwing her at all anyway. Like, Colleen just cannot do the, anything about the opponent throwing her. It's kind of a big problem she faces. Uh, she's just got to tech throws, or jump out, or do stuff like that, backdash. Um, it does have an EX version. Um, I guess I'll show it right now. Let me say right now that the hard one is pretty good as an anti-air, if gimmicky. Like, I, I mentioned earlier that like she can't anti-air like certain jump ranges, because her crouch fierce kind of moves forward. Case in point. Um, but I lied, she actually can anti-air jumps from these ranges. But she's got to use the counter. But the counter is actually incredible. It'll hit even cross-ups fairly easily. 
You can counter cross-ups like nothing with this. Uh, the problem is if they empty jump, they can fuck you up on reaction. You're kind of relying on them not empty jumping. And a lot of people will anticipate this if they fight Colleen even a little bit, and they'll just do an empty jump and watch for your parry if they're jumping from ranges like this. And then if they see the parry, they'll just get big old damage on you. But it's not useless. It's still quite good. It's like a pretty high damage anti-air. And it also picks up some of the range where she's not very good at anti-airing. So it's like still kind of good. And if you fight people who don't know how to play against Colleen, you can get that like pretty easily on them, which is fun. Um, anyway, it has an EX version. EX low, EX mid, EX high. So you still have to choose. It's not like Oaken where it just like does all of them all of a sudden. You've still got to like guess right. Which is one of the this is that's the main weakness of the parry is you need to know what you're going to be parrying. Um, the reward is quite high, and also if you ex it, it becomes one frame, so you can use it as a true reversal. So like even getting up off the ground, you can just wake up with it. The problem is you need to know what you're fucking parrying. So like you don't know if Ryu's going to go for like a meaty low short or a meaty like stand medium punch, and you need to know because you'll do two different parries depending on which one you're anticipating. So just mix ups are strong against Colleen. And also you can throw even these ones, so it's not great. They're quite rewarding to land, though. Um, I would say the main quirk about them that makes them really strong is the fact that you can do them during block strings, which is risky but cool. Um, you can't technically wake up with the medium ones, because they'll just get counter hit. I mean, not the medium, the non X ones. But if you do the X ones, you can even wake up, wake up with them, because they got the parry frames immediately. Um, not that much else to say. There's no way to combo into them or anything like that. There's no way to combo out of them. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say about parry. So now we're running out of things to talk about. V system, I suppose. Uh, yeah. The V system. And her super. Colleen's V skill is super unique. Um, it's a big old swing. It's minus quite a lot. It's minus seven, I think. So if you just do it wildly, it's pretty punishable. And most of its utility comes from doing it wildly. So like you, it's it's a move that carries a decent amount of risk to it. You wouldn't really do this raw most of the time. Or you'd only be doing it raw most of the time. You wouldn't. There's no like way to use it in combos for the most part other than that one TC. Um, there's no purpose of doing something like this. Um, there's no way to combo out of it. I shouldn't say that at all. Um, you can link out of it, basically. It's like plus three, I think. So, like, any hit, you can link a crouch jab on reaction. Um, and if you can get a crouch jab, you can get EX hands. Or light hands. Light hands is not super rewarding, but if you don't have, you know, um, if you don't have EX meter, like, that's your best ender. But I say don't even use this move if you don't have EX meter, because it's not worth the risk. It's kind of a risky button to do. If you're not going to get, like, a decent reward from it, I would say don't even really play around with it that much. Um... So you can get like decent little combos from it. It's like a poke with pretty good range that has some pretty good combos. Um, so on paper, it already looks like it's like it's not useless, but it has one very very cool quirk. Um, oh, and I should say right now, if you happen to get the counter hit, it's plus five, so you can do some stuff. Um, and it's quite easy to counter hit with this attack, but I'll show it off in a minute. I don't have a good way of showing this off. I guess we'll just do it against jumping Rio. If you get hit during the sequence. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. Never mind, it went away. If you get hit during the sequence, um, she does this weird follow-up attack. She's fully invincible for certain frames of it, and it has this huge hitbox that suddenly appears and does like quite a lot of damage, and then an automatic follow-up hit, which you can't actually normally do. The follow-up hit only comes out if you get hit during it. But you don't take any white damage or anything like that. Um... You have this giant hitbox that appears right in front of you that hits like everything in front of you, and it also juggles into a second hit that only appears there. The second hit you can't do anything after except V trigger, and this does this against grounded normals too. It even I think it I think it even parries lows. The only problem is this is quite risky because it's minus seven, and also it takes a little while for the counter frames to appear. But if you get a counter with it, it does quite a lot of damage. If you're far away, it's a really consistent anti air. Most characters don't really have a, a good thing to do against it. And for most of the time, it'll combo into three hits of V-Trigger. I only got one hit of V-Trigger because it was anti-air. But like, if you're at certain ranges, you can kind of fish with it, and it's not super unsafe. And then if the opponent happens to throw out like a normal, like a crouch run house or something like that, I'm actually not 100% sure it parries lows. It doesn't work on fireballs, I can say that for certain, unfortunately. Is this the sweep? It sweeps at three seconds, I think. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll try and parry this and see if we can get it. 
I just hit him. That would be the counter hit. I'd get stim medium kick out of that. I'd be happy with that in a real match. I don't use this tool that much, but it's quite good. Yeah, so you can parry lows. You can parry everything. The game does not care. You can still get thrown out of it, naturally. And it's not a very good wake-up option, because it takes quite a while for the parry frames to appear. It's like frame 10 or something. It's like late. It's not as early as you would expect. Um, but if you happen to get it... Um, I got crush countered. Uh, if you happen to get it... Uh, damn it. You can be trigger on reaction. And it builds quite a lot of V-meter to get it. Like, if you get both hits, both hits build individual V-meter. So between them you get quite a lot. It only got two hits, I lied, it never gets three. Frame five is when the parry window starts, so that's not that slow. It's not nearly as slow as I thought it was. Um, so it's like a... It's, it's kind of rewarding to kind of throw out every now and then. It does pretty good damage if you get both hits. And it builds a lot of V-meter. And even if you don't, even if, if you, even if you just hit the opponent, you've got conversions out of it. Um, so that's already pretty good. But then the really icing on the cake is that it counters certain things. Like I talked about jump ins, if the opponent can't alter their jump arc, this is just a perfect anti air from far away. Doesn't work that well from close. Um, it counters certain attacks. Like if you see a Mika charging hard kick, this just beats it. Like either she just does the uncharged version, and it either whiffs and then you hit her and then you do a combo. Or she hits you and then you do the full like two hit V skill because you parried it. Or like she does the charged drop kick and then that just hits you and then you counter her and then you do a ton of damage. Or like a Geef charging sand hard punch. Like you can just do this as soon as you see that. And no matter when he releases stand hard punch or even if he doesn't release it, you'll just hit him. Just wait until like he would have to release it kinda late and then just bam. And like no his release won't counter at you, you'll 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 get the parry and you'll do some good damage. There's certain attacks that, like, on reaction you can do this and it's, like, a good tool against those attacks. Those are, like, the two main examples I can think of, but I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's certain stuff you can just... It doesn't work on fireballs. It would be really good for her if it worked on fireballs, but it doesn't. You can't use it against, like, Rashid's Tornado or any bullshit like that. You can't even use it to go through a Ryu Hadouken. Um... Let me see here. I think there's another trick to it, but I forget... There's like there's some other quirk to it. There's some interesting thing. Oh, you can juggle into it. That's it. So let's say uh, I happen to have a jumping opponent, and they happen to land into an ice ball because they're just kind of jumping around and I'm doing random ice balls. If you actually see an ice ball connect on an airborne opponent, generally speaking, her only juggles are like this and like Hanes. And this is way too slow and often too far away, and Hanes does very little damage. But you can also get a V-Skill, and the V-Skill does pretty good damage. So V-Skill has like very little startup too. So anytime you see that, like you can just pick that up on reaction, which is pretty nice. Goes pretty far too, with decent startup. So it's like your main juggle in scenarios like that, and that's like a more common scenario than it sounds, the opponent landing on an ice ball. Um, and then if you have a close V-trigger, I've been doing this move without explaining it at all, um, you can actually interrupt. That one I actually got all the hits. You can, like, get, with a very precise prompt V-Skill, you can uh, interrupt the V-Trigger's, like, third hit with the V-Skill. And that adds a significant amount of damage. Like, that did 135, 450. The V-Trigger by itself only does 90. So I added, like, 45 damage and, like, 90 stun with that one little hit. And you can do that in a lot of her little setups. I don't know if this one works. I think it doesn't. But, like, for example... There, I got it there. There's a couple other scenarios where you can get it. I think that one doesn't work. I think that one does. It's quite prompt. It's like harder than it looks. But it's not, it's, it carries no risk at all. The opponent like can't quick stand and punish you or anything like that. Um... But that's, that's a little optimization that I don't see Colleen players go for very much. And then we talked about this one a second ago. Which may or may not actually be better. Um, what else? I don't have that much else to say about V-Skill. You can juggle into it. It's a parry. It's a little risky, but a little rewarding. And then you can do that. The second hit only of the V-Skill is part of her target combo. That's just the second hit. That's the one that only activates if you get hit. That lets you like activate V-Trigger and stuff like that. So her V-Trigger is kind of notable that it knocks down. 
And it's also like an activate. It's like a. It's not an activate V trigger. I mean, technically speaking, she has two of them, and she gets a bar before she can use the second one. So it's like quite a lot like Aegis Reflector, I suppose. Um, but the main problem with it is that it knocks down when the opponent's not already knocked down. So it actually mercs her combos rather than making them better. Like with most V triggers, you can do like a button and then activate, and then like more sequences. But her, she actually like you know she pushes like it's already not a very strong V trigger. And it forces the opponent out of combos. So, almost always, it's stronger not to have a V-Trigger in a combo than to have a V-Trigger in a combo. So if you're looking for damage maximization, like, there's only a few combos where you can just tag on the V-Trigger at the end where you would otherwise have nothing. The main one is the V-Skill v combo. Like, doesn't actually do any more than, like, regular. Um, but this fucking move does so much goddamn stun compared to every other attack in this whole fucking game. 360 stun. On, on one fucking action. Not only that, but as long as the opponent doesn't hit me, he is in a state where he is kind of frosty, and uh, his stun bar will not go down regardless of how much time passes. So I can decide, oh, I want to play some zoning with some ice balls and be annoying for a little while. Um, and I can just rack up stun very slowly with every ice ball I land, if I happen to land any. And, like, you know, he's not recovering stun until he manages to hit me with a Hadouken or something. And if he's a character like, uh, I don't know, fucking Birdie, who, I don't know, with, like, bad full screen presence, um, he's just sitting here in this horrible scenario where he can't recover any stun and he can't really, like, do anything about this kind of annoying pressure. Not that Birdie's helpless. No character against Colleen is helpless. Um, but, like, that stun just sits there. It's so strong. Like, she has so much, like, momentum. Or rather, she always has momentum. It's like, even if you're not going in, you've still got... You can just make any sequence, like, lead to any other sequence. Just even, no matter how much time passes. Just because you've always got that thread of stun that carries over. Um, and then it also lets her make comebacks really easily. Because she can stun you, like... She she has sequences where she can stun you, like, almost... Some of the best in the game. Like, she's actually... Her damage is kind of low, but she's still, like, really good at making comebacks. Because she can just get, like, stuns out of nowhere. And, you know, no matter who you are, a full, like... A couple combos into a stun into another combo is going to do, like, you know, most of your health. Crouch medium punch, stay medium kick, stand hard punch, V trigger, V skill. Dash up, crouch medium punch, stay medium kick, white out. V trigger is a stun on all characters, I think. Yeah, she's got a lot of little sequences that just, like, break characters. Um, What else about it? I think there's some other tricks to it. Um, combo into it is kind of annoying. Um, if you get the EX hands, um, you can just do it raw, which I think is optimal stun, maybe. 438. You can also do the cancel to uh, medium vanity step into sweep, and then from that sweep you can do it, but I think that only gets two hits. Yeah. 408, so a little bit less stun. Probably more damage, I don't know. Um, if you ever get in a, in a context where you only get one hit of, or two hits of V-Trigger, you're always guaranteed two. Um, you can actually combo into another V-Trigger for like the third one. That doesn't work mid-screen. Yeah, see, I just got it like that. Got the third hit using the other one. So she's got two. The time window to use the second one is quite long. Um, the second one still has cancels, but it doesn't have the super freeze. So, like, this is already... That combos, but without the super freeze, it won't combo. So you can only do it with the first one. Most characters with V-Triggers like that, they only have the one V-Trigger freeze. The second one is just a new special move. Um, and then... Uh, what else? Um, you can, you can... It's safe. It's not only safe, it's plus a lot. Like, if you do, like, this... There's zero risk associated with that. And it does quite a lot of stun, and it's like quite, re quite rewarding. Uh, if you're trying to like chip the opponent out, this is quite a famous like thing that you can do with her. You can get, like... That's not a true block string. But you can get, like... Um, what, is, what are the true block strings? Let me get a cornered opponent and a blocking Ryu. It's literally like... Uh, I did medium hands. Let me get him to guard recovery action. Oh, that actually is not a true block string. I'll do stand fierce there.
That entire sequence was a true block string. I did that much damage in a true block string. And white health, white health, white health isn't factored for chip. So I just did like a like 150, 200 damage true block string. So I can just, if I ever get the opponent in that kind of scenario where I've got the full super and the full B trigger, even if they block, I can just kill them unless they have a B reversal. You can just do that whole sequence. That that being said, you'll probably give the opponent a B reversal just for going sh for shit like this. But like, even if I don't do that entire sequence, even though I just do some of that sequence, I just did a shit ton of chip. Um, so it's, it's like a pretty strong, it's a pretty strong way to kill the opponent late game. That whole thing was true block string. So it's like really good as like a poke. That being said, it's not true, or like that at least isn't true. The opponent can reverse all DP through that, for example, down medium kick into V trigger on block. Um, I think after Stand Fierce it's true. I think that's a true block string. And then, I don't know about this. I don't know if that's a true block string. Generally speaking, the combos into the second one are the same as the first. Let me just say some of the combos off the top of my head. You got the EX hands into V trigger. Um, you've got any jab, strong, fierce combo into V trigger. You've got, um, her target combo into V trigger. You've got... what else? Um, that means kick into V-Trigger. Oh, that's true. If you get the V-Reversal, you can actually parry V-Reversals. I can't believe I didn't mention that when I was talking about parries. If Ryu, like, V-Reversals, and I've got, I mean, good reaction time, and I'm not committed... And this recovers really fast. Like, if the opponent V-Reverses it, it's... I'm not committed. Um, if the opponent tries to V reverse that, you can actually like see it and react and do like a parry and then parry the V reversal and that's like 200 some damage. So it's actually really busted. She's actually got some insanely good like end game stuff, in addition to insanely good ways of making comebacks. Um, what else? There might be a little bit more to that. What else about V trigger? I feel like this still something, some things I'm missing. You can confirm it from like any crush counter stuff too. You can also land it from her uh, B skill, the second and only, not the first. It doesn't come up from lights or anything. First one combos from mediums, I think the second one doesn't. Yeah, gotta be heavies. Oh, I should have mentioned this. Any successful V trigger can be comboed to super. That's like actually really important. I usually do forward dash into super just to make it more consistent. All V triggers are super confirms. I don't know why I did that combo. That was not what I was looking for. Um, nice fucking forward dash. You can do a hailstorm from a mid screen V trigger and do a double dash up to cover your approach and combo off the hailstorm if it connects when they wake up from a job. Jesus Christ. Where's my forward dash? I don't know the timing on the second one. Maybe just raw super would be better. That did in fact feel better. Um, oh, I should mention that I said it was plus a lot on block. Um, but you get a lot of corner carry. I should I should show that off just a little bit. Like if Ryu is just blocking my attacks. You know. The chip damage is good. The stun is really good if it actually hits. The damage is kind of poor, poor. Um, but the corner carry and the safety and the amount, the way of like leading to more mix-ups is quite good. And then again, if you ever hit them with it, they get frosty. So it's really good to land, even if it doesn't do that much damage. It's still very, very rewarding. And it's two-bar V trigger, so it's pretty cheap. You'll probably get a V reversal plus a V trigger. And before I fucking forget, before I fucking forget. She's got one of them roll V reversals. It's one of the better ones. It's not super committal and it doesn't go super far. Oh yeah, you can't be projectile invincible against uh, her V trigger. You've just got to be regular invincible. It's not a projectile. Um, she's got one of those rolly V reversals, which is okay because she actually really wants to escape the corner because she's not very good at that. Um, it doesn't go that far though, so she can't like the opponent can maybe throw her even after she tries it. Depends on what they're doing. Um, but it's also kind of good because certain actions that are normally safe, her V reversal can punish. So, like, for example, um, 
Yeah, I'm fighting a Chun-Li doing EX legs. I can react to an EX legs with a forward V-Rus, and then like do stand fierce into hands and punish her. Or like uh, Nikali block strings into stomp if I roll during a hit, and then he cancels to stomp, and I roll like I can punish him. Or like certain like uh, I think Claw has some sequences. A lot of stuff like that. Uh, what what uh, Zangief's V trigger. If he's doing V-Trigger and I'm blocking it a little bit, like I can react to the fact that he forced me to start blocking hits and then roll and then punish him. She can make things that are normally safe unsafe, and she can also use it to escape corners. That being said, she won't actually hit the opponent, so you don't get your white damage, you don't get your guaranteed uh, like counter pressure, you don't get like you know the normal stuff you get from a V-Reverse. But it's like good for her. I wouldn't say it's good for her, but like she doesn't mind it that much. There are sometimes where you wish you had a normal V-Reversal, but there are sometimes where it's like wow, it's really cool that I have this. Pretty much the same as all the other. Dodge V reversal characters. Also acts like Sims V trigger. It stays out even if you hit her. Oh, I didn't know that. So the V trigger is guaranteed to come out. Unlike Sims V reversals, are long enough to avoid it. Oh, unlike Sims V reversals are long enough to avoid it. Yeah, Sims Sims stays there forever, and hers does not. Um, overall, she's a pretty kind of defensive character. She's got like kind of annoying pressure stuff. She's got good anti-approach between her pokes and her like buttons in general. She's got a little bit of mix-up shenanigans like this, but mostly she's just kind of like uh, kind of like an anti-approach annoyer kind of. She's not really. She doesn't really have like a Street Fighter style archetype. She's kind of unique and different. Um, there are some other things I want to talk about very briefly. I didn't talk about her stupor. There's not much to say. Um, you can combo it off of hard hands. You can combo it off of any uppercut. I think, but you wouldn't do that. Oh, never mind. It doesn't even work. Only, only hard hands and the first couple hits of like other versions of hands. So like, um, I didn't show this off, but you can actually do. You can do two hits and then super cancel. So that's like the best way to land super off of lights, I think. I right, whenever sweep being cancelable, there's not that much to say. It's kind of a novelty more than anything else. It's mostly just used for her ex hands combos. Um, what else? Her super 7 frames, it juggles pretty much all the time. It's got a shit ton of juggle potential. It cancels from hard hands, last hit, any version of hands, first two hits. Uh, this little thing, which you don't really do that much. Um, I don't think it cancels from a target combo. So you're shit out of luck there. Not even the first two hits. Um, mm, I don't know, you can't land it from that much. You can land it after any V-Trigger. Most of her special moves don't really work with super cancels. Like, that doesn't. This doesn't. Well, I guess that one follow-up it does. Um, this doesn't. So it's basically just hands. Uh, and V-Trigger. And I don't think V-Skill, either by itself or with the follow-up hit, will combo into super either. Most V-Skills don't cancel the super. In fact, I don't think any of them do. Um... I guess that's it. Let's talk a little bit about footsies and combos and whatnot. Um, anti airs Crouch Fierce, pretty good. Um, it's not great. You've got to pick your ranges. From up close, she's got to do like an air throw or like a jump jab. Are very strong. What about LK, Vanity Step, Dagger, follow up being active if she goes forward so it's more safe to close at the edge of the range? I forgot about that. That's worth mentioning. This is like a spiral arrow. Um, Normally it's like minus, it's unsafe. I should have mentioned that sooner. It is unsafe. Um, but the further you travel, the less unsafe it is. So if you kind of connect to the tip, it'll kind of space, and also it'll be, it'll have better frame data. So, it's not horribly risky to, like, poke out with. And again, this has some invincibility and also goes through fireballs, so there's some, there's some stuff to that. Um, anyway. Crouch Fierce is a good anti-air. If they're close, you don't have Crouch Fierce, so you're probably going to be doing air throw, which requires a decent amount of like reaction speed. So you've got to kind of consider like whatever you jump to me. Anytime you're at this range, you got to do stuff like that. I was actually too far away even for that. Jump jab would have been better there. Or a neutral jump into air throw. That's what I often do. That's like quite good. Very good success rate. Very low reward though. You can also do that. It looks like it's not that hard to do on reaction. It's not impractical. It looks impractical, but it's not. But if she's got to do shit like this against um, close jumps, because her close anti-air is really garbage. 
Um, and then if you're far away, you can do Crutch Hard Punch, which is quite good. You can also use V Skill if you're really far away or Stamina House. And you can also use Hard Counter. There you go, I did two round houses. You. You can also use the X counter if you want a bit of extra damage and stun. Looks really cool too. On your knees. Loot. Um in terms of combos, bread and butter combos, bread and butter confirm is gonna be something like from light almost it's gonna be something like that into hard hands. Uh if you're doing like uh if you're doing like a low confirm, it's gonna be something like that or that or um that Take your poison on the ender. I can't believe I keep missing this. I thought I was over the point where I missed that. Um, and then, uh, if you want to do, or let's see, if you want like a confirm combo, this is very strong as your starter, and then from that you can do like this, or you can also do like that, or you can also do like this. Very strong. That time it just missed. I think I had a late cancel. If you want to do like a uh, like a max damage combo, you do something like that. Or at the EX hands, same combo. Or you could do like this if you want to land the V skill. Um, and then what else? Those are like her main combos. And then in footsies, you want to do a lot of. It depends on the opponent. She does different things against different opponents. She's never really at a super big disadvantage. A lot of people say her worst matchup is Zangief. It's like it's easy to get cornered in that matchup, and it's also hard to escape the corner. And also, she's kind of weak against people doing meaty throws. She's got to jump, or she's got to tech the throw, or she's got to backdash, because this doesn't work, or this, or fucking this, um, or that, I don't think. So she's kind of in a bad situation when it comes to that. She's just got to make the right predictions. She doesn't have like an EXTP that'll just beat everything. Um, I think uh, grapplers are supposed to be a little bad for her, but like really, at the end of the, I've like seen a lot of this character be played, and I've played her a lot myself, and it doesn't really feel like she's ever at a serious disadvantage. There was a lot of talk that she'd be low tier when she came out, but like in application, it appears that most of her matchups are just five fives. She's not like a super strong. She's not a super weak character. She's got a lot of cool tricks. Very few people have like good matchup knowledge against her. So she's got like a good capacity to exploit people's um, lack of knowledge. Ex heavy vanity step jump medium kick stand like kick, yeah. It's minus five. That is minus five, minus five little gimmick right there. If you want pressure, um, any light normal is good pressure. Crush medium punch is good pressure. I guess stand medium punch too, but crush medium punch especially because it doesn't push out as much. And then you can confirm out of it a lot easier. Like that. You know, whatever. Um, what else? Uh, she's got, if you get blocked, you've got shenanigans and the vanity step. Shenanigans and the vanity step are pretty strong. That's supposed to be two jabs. Um,. That was a bit early, wasn't I? Um, not using rain. I thought that worked. I thought that worked. Maybe the opponent just walks backward into it when I do it. Oh no, I got it. Kind of precise the time. Um, stuff. Stuff with vanity step is annoying and cool and fun. And then anytime you have a V trigger. Um, you can do some stuff into V Trigger, which is 100% safe and combos from a lot of stuff and does pretty good damage anyway. And then you exploit the fact that the opponent can't really fucking recover that st stun by getting more pressure on them with other attacks. And they're kind of scared and afraid and don't know what to do. Or you can, you know, hang back a little bit and fucking do some zoning and whatever. You can do that when you don't have ice, don't get me wrong. Her zoning is okay with this ice ball. This ice ball is a pretty cool tool. Basically, like a really delayed Viper Seismo, but it comes from the ceiling instead of the ground, so you can't jump out of it. Well, you can, but like only before the ice ball forms. Um, weaknesses: weak to 
wake up pressure, especially throw based wake up pressure. Um, her damage is kind of low. Um, she doesn't have like a traditional view or anything like that, so you know, pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, her anti air is kind of weak, kind of picky, kind of picky. It's not weak per se, but she has to be really choosy about what kind of anti air she goes for.